What up, y'all? It's your guy Dawson from Dawson Speak TV and D&D TV. Thank you for rating, commenting, subscribing, and sharing the videos on this channel. Much love to those who support this channel by donating. I appreciate it. All that information is in the description box underneath the video. Also, make sure you hit the notification bell so you get notifications when I drop a new video. Now, let's get into this topic. All right, thanks for clicking on the video. Now, this video is for educational purposes, and as I approach this topic with respect, I want you all to please, please, please be respectful in my comment section. Thanks. Now, before I get into this story, I want to say that Dawson Speaks TV does not discriminate on the basis of race, color, religion, gender, gender expression, age, national origin, disability, marital status, sexual orientation, military status, or political affiliation. Now, these stories are from all over, but we're going to stop in Texas first. Houston, Texas. Now, our good buddy, Pastor Keon Henderson, and his wife, media mogul, Shawnee Henderson, they've been in the news lately for some of everything. However, no matter what's said about either one of them, they draw close to each other, walk hand in hand, and they will continue to do the work of the Lord. I just have a question. Is basketball... <laughs> Is basketball wives a part of the work of the Lord? But nevertheless, who am I to judge? I'm just a YouTube vlogger. Now, many of you all were upset a couple of months ago when Pastor Keon told that lady to hush during a Sunday service when she was up in the choir stand. Well, some of you all told me that Keon had apologized, and I saw the video, and I'm happy that Keon apologized to the lady, and now we can move on from this. Now, I know there are some people saying, Dawson, this is a little too late. Look. The lady accepted his apology, she wants to move on, and hell, I want to move on to the next topic. <laughs> Let's go. Let's get into this. A Maryland pastor is saying goodbye. Yes, he's leaving us, but just for a while. Pastor Rudolph Brooks Jr. is the founder and senior pastor of Kingdom Tabernacle Restoration Ministry, and he also had a car dealership. Now, just recently, Pastor Rudolph Brooks Jr., 48 years old, was sentenced to 18 months in federal prison for fraudulently obtaining over $3.5 million in CV-19 Paycheck Protection Program loans. Take a breath. Man, man, pastor, pastor. God shall supply your needs according to his riches and glory. You didn't have to go down there and lie to the government to get that PPP loan. Well, what's done is done now. Nah, let me go on. Now, I know some people want to know what did he spend this money on? Well, I'm going to tell you. Pastor Brooks used part of these funds to purchase a $60,000 Tesla Model 3 because he needed one in order to keep up with the other flashy pastors in his area that are all living lavish lifestyles. When the Tesla was purchased, it was purchased in Pastor Brooks' son's name. However, the vehicle was later registered in Maryland in Pastor Brooks' own name. Pastor Brooks also purchased property in Maryland, which cost $507,010. The pastor, who also has his own car dealership, he bought 39 additional cars with that money. Man, the pastor also used some of the PPP money to eat at nice restaurants, shopping, and for other personal items. Now, let me deal with his church, his supporters, and, you know, people like that. Because I know online people said a lot, you know, while Pastor was going through the court stuff, that you, you can, oh, the devil did this, you know, haters are, no, 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 no. I'm not blaming the devil. I'm not blaming haters. Your pastor did this. This is what he did. He sat his butt down there and filled out that application, those applications, to get that money. No one's hating on him. No one's coming for him. Your pastor did this to himself. And for you supporters and church members, even some family members, when you love someone, to love them is to say, yo, I love you, pastor, friend, but you did wrong. That was wrong what you did. Now, I still love you, but there are consequences when we do wrong. Now, when Pastor Brooks was apprehended by officers, some of his supporters, church members, deleted the church's website and most of the social media that the church had. And my question to them is this. Why are you all trying to hide now? 
You all didn't delete any of the social media accounts or the websites when Pastor Brooks got that $3.5 million and he was riding around town in his new Tesla and he was shopping at all these different stores, eating at nice restaurants, living high off the hog. No one thought about deleting any social media accounts then. Now, even though some of the supporters and church members deleted a lot of Pastor Brooks' information from his social media accounts and from the church's website, some people did take screenshots and they were able to get the bio of Pastor Brooks. And according to the bio, it describes Pastor Brooks as a man after God's own heart. Right. It also says that he has a passion for God's people. Now, the bio goes on to say that from an early age, Pastor Brooks knew that he had a calling to ministry. People would receive their deliverance before the altar call because the word of the Lord was so rich in his belly. <laughs> but my question is this. If the word of the Lord was so rich in your belly, then why did you do all of this? Because on the outside looking in, it seems as though that greed, lies, and manipulation were the only things in this pastor belly. And that's why we're here today. And that's why he has 18 months in prison. Plus, he's going to have to pay that money back. And when he gets released, he's going to be on probation for two years. That doesn't sound like a person that has the word of the Lord so rich in their belly. Come on, y'all. Let's be real. Now, since the word of the Lord is so rich in his belly, I think we ought to hear from the pastor. Don't you? As a matter of fact, I think it's apropos. So I'm going to let you all watch this video and I'll be back with the rest of my commentary. And you all know me. I'm Dawson and I won't hold back. Whole. He made all kind of excuses. But what are you going to say? I don't know how. When Jesus shows up and asks the question, that he already told us that in this season, uh, that we're under an open heaven. Uh, the open heaven is still here. Uh, it's still open for you and me. Uh, now it's time for us to open my mouth uh, and begin to speak what God put in us. Uh, don't just speak, but God already gave you the vision. Uh, God already gave you the confirmation. Uh, he gave you the yes in your prayer. Don't get up and walk. This thing out of that. We walk by faith and not by sight. Just because you don't see it, we gotta speak to it huh? and command that thing to be. Huh? We gonna continue to speak to our money huh? and cause it to multiply. Huh? We gonna speak to our car and cause it to run right. Huh? We gonna speak over our children huh? and cause them to live right. Huh? We gonna speak over our business huh? and cause it to be fruitful. Huh? I'm qualified to be blessed. Huh? I'm gonna speak like I'm qualified. Huh? I'm gonna command the sin to line up. Huh? I'm gonna command know why all of these con artists these fake people they just keep coming to the church why don't y'all get out of the lord's church leave the good people alone some of these people don't have a heart for god or the people of god it's greed it's all about them now you all get down in the comment section and let me know what you think about pastor brooks pastor brooks the crook because i'm going on to the next topic now, this next story comes out of Indiana. Some of my viewers and subscribers, you all may remember, I covered this story about two years ago about the football player from Indiana University. And I'm glad to report that in this case, now we have some closure. Now, this man you all see in front of you is Deshaun Brown. Deshaun loves sports. All of his life, he wanted to be a professional football player. That desire, along with his God-given talent, led Deshaun to getting a scholarship to Indiana University where he was a part of the football team. And the position he played, well, he was a wide receiver. Now, Deshaun enjoyed spending time with his family, friends, and teammates. Deshaun and his teammates would often talk about college life, women, God knows those athletes, they love women, and sports. Everything in Deshaun's life appeared to be going fine. Well, that was until this happened. 
On April 6, 2022, Deshaun Brown met a man on the dating app called Grindr, which is a same-gender loving dating app. Now, the victim reported to officers that he met an unknown man on the dating app Grindr and that he invited the man to his apartment for consensual, remember that word, consensual adult interactions around 2 a.m. in the morning. Take a breath. Consensual. These athletes in their consensual situations, we've heard that word when it was with Dwight Howard. Remember, Dwight Howard's lawyer said that what happened between Dwight Howard, Kitty, and Stephen Harper was consensual touching. Come on, y'all. You can't get mad at us for reporting this stuff. We didn't tell them to do it. We didn't make them do it. They did this because they wanted to. Let me move on. Now, according to the victim, Deshaun Brown wore a face covering, a mask, and he requested that the lights inside of the apartment be turned off so he could not be identified. Once Deshaun and the victim were finished with their consensual adult interaction, Deshaun held an object to the victim's neck and demanded money. When the victim told him he didn't have money and he showed him his wallet, Deshaun saw ATM cards and other credit cards. So Deshaun put a coat over the man's head, put him inside of his car, and drove him to an ATM. Once Deshaun got the money, he drove the man back to his house, took the man's phone, he deleted the grinder app out of the man's phone, and he told the man that if he told anyone, he he would unalive him. However, when Deshaun left, the man did contact officers and Deshaun Brown was apprehended. Now, just a few months ago, Deshaun Brown took a plea deal and he was sentenced to more than two and a half years in prison. Now, this whole situation shocked Deshaun's family, friends, and teammates because no one knew that he had this secret life where he would meet individuals on Grindr. And coming from such a good background, people were shocked by these allegations until they found out that it was true. But the truth is, you really don't know what people will do. I mean, people will tell you one thing while they're talking to you, looking at you straight in the eyes, but their mind is on the other side of town. We got to be careful out here. Now listen, to those of you who date online, to those of you who use these apps to meet up with people, be careful. Please be careful. I'm talking to men, women, gay, straight, bi, tri, those who sit and ponder and ask God why. Yeah, I'm talking to you too. Please be careful. You all, there are some evil people in this world. They will take your kindness for weakness. They can sniff out your desperation for companionship or for consensual adult interactions and they will play on your emotions and then try to turn around and take you out of here. Well, I got to talk to the masses. They're coming over to your place or you're going over to their place just to have a good time. But honestly, you don't know what's on someone else's mind. Be careful. Now, let me say this to the victim. I'm glad that you got some justice in this situation and I'm glad that you're okay. But moving forward, I hope that you and others like you will think twice before inviting people over to your home or going over to people's home. All right. And to Deshaun Brown, you wanted your sexual desires to remain a secret. You knew exactly what you were going to do that night when you showed up to that man's house wearing that face covering because you didn't want to be identified during the sexual act or the criminal one. But because of your actions that night, everyone, including your family, friends, former teammates, people online, and the men at the prison where you currently reside now, Sir, they all know what you like. They all know. Deshaun, bro, you got two and a half years. When you get out, do better. Just do better. And if you didn't already apologize to the victim, just send the victim an apology letter, all right? Now I'm off of this. Get down in the comments. Let me know what you think about these topics. Thank you all for thumbs up in the video, sharing the video with family and friends. I appreciate it. To those of you all who support this platform and say, Brother Dawson, you bless me. I'm going to bless you back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you all for that. Until next time, it's your guy Dawson. Take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Please take care of yourself and each other. Peace.